This is Stacy Marshall with Printware Magazine. Matt Vassallo with TheRidingStoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are or that regular. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show. It's Friday, February 8th. 2019. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at Equipment Zone. You can also find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at aaronmontgomery.info. Uh, today, we're going to be talking niche markets uh, to boost your 2019 sales. Uh, plus, we're also going to be chatting with Marshall Atkinson about the upcoming Shirt Lab event here in uh, balmy 17-degree uh, St. Louis right now. So <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be uh, be fun here in, in St. Louis. So uh, anyways, uh, you know, I always love uh, when we when I put a kind of a random intro in there because I don't know what it uh, is saying and to watch you smile while it's going on. I know it's something <laughs> funny is being said, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh there's, those intros are a lot of fun. And uh, I guess we recorded more than them. And I realized because some of them catch me by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Good stuff. So got some people checking in already. Uh, morning to Todd. Good morning to Marshall. Marshall, we'll, we'll see you actually live here in just a bit when we talk about uh, some things. But uh, we got some uh, some some news to announce, it's news that's uh, near and dear and close to our hearts. So I think uh, we need to bring in the guy to announce his own news today. We're going to bring in Eric Campbell. Let's see if we get him uh, on. The guy, there he the is. Myth, the, legend. the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Eric Campbell. <laughs> yeah, the, the irregular guy and a part-time replacement. <laughs> 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 yeah here For i am sure. folks so yeah we have a little bit of brand new news today to start off industry news that has been announced nowhere else yet uh everybody's been kind of asking what projects i've been on and uh that's something that people have been getting all excited about asking i know uh, if you uh, were careful and looked at uh, iss long beach Wearing it on the badge, it was registered, funny enough, on my speaker profile for months. So uh, everybody who wondered where I was, uh, went one search away, kiddos. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and announce officially here today that where I'm working, and if you noticed that uh, the two other guys has had a new gold sponsor, and that is Brighton Leap, the creators of Imbrilliance, and that's where I'm working. So uh, now I am with Brighton Leap, and I am officially, I'm going to get out the business card so I don't mess up the title. Uh, I am the program manager of the commercial division. And uh, like titles for most people of my ilk who do a little bit of everything, we toss that title around to try and figure out what it is that I am. So what, it, what that means for us is um, we have more and more commercial users coming on who are using the Imbrilliance platform. And uh, once we all met and kind of figured out we were actually housed here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, it's why I met Brian, who's the uh, creator of Imbrilliance. Um, we realized, hey, I've got this knowledge about commercial embroidery. I can help get commercial features out there and help people with what those use cases are um, in a way they might not have had before. So that's a big chunk of what I'm doing is helping with the development of uh, software features and things for the commercial market. Um, and more than that, there's some other fun stuff that I'm doing. I can't announce everything, but I want to hint all of that now because there's so many cool things coming up, both in the feature side on the software and in the rest of the year coming out. Um, one of the other things we tossed around for titles, which I love this title, it just wasn't really everything I was doing, was Embroidery Curator, which sounds awesome like I'm in a museum <laughs> curating awesome embroidery yeah. stuff. It sounds good. What that means is I'm going to be bringing some really cool embroidery assets uh, to the product and to the industry. Um, partially some historical cool stuff for machine embroidery. If you're a machine embroiderer like me, you know like there's awesome fonts or designs or stuff like that that uh, people really love that have kind of maybe gone by the wayside. The companies have gone somewhere that they aren't there anymore and we want to see some of those fonts and designs and cool things that everybody used or was that were historical the industry come up and some new stuff that I'm going to curate and create myself so we're that's the content side and then we're going to be doing our own uh, education stuff too so uh, down the road there are going to be some more uh, online education opportunities that were going to come from uh, from Bright Leap and from me so that's the kind of stuff we're working on and a lot of it down the pipe months away but that's where I am right now and I'm glad to be able to announce it here. Nice. Well, awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I, a couple of things came to mind, uh, bringing to bear some embroidery assets. I, I, it sounds like you're going to be the ambassador to embroidery and then <laughs> going to be, it has been <laughs> what I want to be, it's, I, but now it's official. And then uh, my other thought is 
uh, show producer, now working for the company that's our gold sponsor. Now I feel like we kind of work for you, and I, I guess I can't use the term e rich. No, no, I will e rich. <laughs> There is nothing in this world that will stop you from doing that. In fact, I think I just saw in the comments that I yeah. got an E Rich already. Yeah, there we are, did. Marshall Atkinson. How do I not know that Marshall would do this? <laughs> How have you, that, why have you done this, Marshall? That, <laughs> might have been, that, that might have. I saw that pop up, and that might have motivated my uh, subliminally. My so good job, Marshall. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely, I, and I love that. Thank you for saying that. I mean, I know we were joking around, but yeah, no, I, I like the idea of being the ambassador from embroidery. And also, by the way, doing education. I'm not going to start running around, and I'm just going to talk about software features from where I'm working. I never have before and I won't do that now. I like to teach theory. I like to teach things that are general and usable by everybody. So don't don't think that where, now that I'm with a company that does some embroidery software that I won't teach uh, on any software or things that work for everybody because that's not that's not how I work and that's sure. cool with the people here. Uh, they don't want me to be me, which is uh, what I'm going to do. So <laughs> re nice. reliably, that's what I keep there doing whether people like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Eric. Well, you be you. Right. And uh, thank you so much for uh, the announcement and uh, for all of the, the support. And I'm imagining you're going to probably be hanging out in the comments here for us today as we get through the rest Absolutely. of this. And um, so, yeah, we'll, uh, in fact, we got some more information about uh, Brighton Leap coming up here shortly. So, uh, fantastic. Hey, congratulations, go. Eric, on your yeah, uh, on definitely. The new position. Nice Thank job. Thank you very much. Thank you Thanks, for having me, guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Good deal. Well, I, I kind of feel like uh, I had an epic fail there with this opportunity, breaking news, not told anywhere else. And uh, I didn't have any breaking news music to play, you know, <laughs> next Gosh. time. Well, yeah. Yeah. Next time. I don't know. I guess. Uh, yeah. Next time. Can, can, he, <laughs> can he announce it again and pretend like we didn't do it? And then, uh, OK. All right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You can always put it into the podcast version. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's a good call. Darn it. All right. I got to cut that part out. Hold on. Let's right. have a pause so I can cut that. OK. All right. <laughs> um, so good stuff. Everybody uh, checking in here this morning. Uh, Got lots of folks tuning in and, and viewing today. I uh, wanted to just say good morning to uh, Deborah, Deborah Korn, Terry. We're uh, ThreadX, she says, and uh, Deborah is from Print Media Center. And we're going to be doing some stuff with Deborah fairly soon. Absolutely. Uh, coming up here at ThreadX is where it's all going to start. But uh, we are excited to be working with Deborah to uh, kind of bring some people together and talk about the merging of uh, of industries. You know, she comes from a more traditional print side. And uh, so SJA Print United is what we're really going to be talking about and, and uh, kind of starting at ThreadX. So I'm really excited for that. It's going to be a I, ton of yeah. fun. I think uh, the three of us together on microphone is going to be a little overwhelming for some folks. <laughs> <laughs> you probably but will it's not. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> that's right. You probably will not hear me talk at all. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a blast, and the energy is going to be uh, off the chart. So cannot wait for that. Um, says, uh, we can play the Jeopardy music and say, "Who is?" <laughs> Once we talk about Eric, I love that. Uh, good stuff there. All right. Terry, um, another quick uh, news item that uh, came across to outside of uh, Eric's news bit there is American EFRID and a and &E, I guess is uh, how they're normally referenced, announce a collaboration agreement with Applied DNA Sciences to develop sewing thread using certainty anti-counterfeiting technology. So uh, Eric inspired me to uh, bring some more embroidery information here. And <laughs> uh, let's see here. The quote is, the certainty program is an innovative solution for brands and retailers in their supply chain, says Les Miller, CEO of a and &E. a and &E and Applied DNA Sciences together are creating new security applications for sewing thread, benefiting from revolutionary SignaT DNA and beacon technology. Our customers are increasingly more vigilant and security minded DNA technology can protect a wide range of products from luxury customer brands to industrial applications where integrity of components is mission critical. We are excited to be collaborating with applied DNA sciences and developing cutting edge technology solutions for our customers. So seems, seems interesting. I don't uh, know a whole lot about that, but uh, uh, definitely technology, love technology. So keep, keep it coming. <laughs> what yeah, about absolutely. you, Terry? <laughs> well, uh, you know, Aaron, I, I know a lot of our listeners know that I moved to Phoenix uh, 16, 17 years ago from Kansas City. And uh, and my Kansas City Chiefs almost made it to the Super Bowl and uh, expecting big things because um, MVP quarterback um, Patrick Mahomes 
he's debuted his new apparel line and and uh, hugely popular in Kansas City, obviously. And and everybody's uh, wearing shirts like hanging with with my homies and things like that. And uh, so uh, uh, Mahomes tweeted Tuesday night a link to the new official clothing website that carries all types of Mahomes apparel. The online retail store, Mahomes15.com, Mahomes15.com, the number 15. He's like us. You think <laughs> yeah, he picked that up from us? <laughs> 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 He's got a pair for men, women, and kids, along with hats and links to other Mahomes-related news. Uh, the clothes, obviously, are focused on Kansas City Chiefs quarterback and former Texas, Texas Tech's uh, Red Raider uh, Red Raiders, um, quarterback. It's mainly T-shirts and hoodies and and good luck to him. He seems not only uh, an MVP quarterback, but a really good guy. And uh, best of luck to him in this endeavor. And man, we love to see people getting into t-shirts, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Bring, bring, bringing more people to the t-shirt world. I love it. And uh, it, yeah, we need to check in with him and just make sure that he's clear with people when he's talking about his website, how it's done, how you. Uh, I think we should too. And uh, and you know, if he wants to give us some sideline tickets, uh, yeah, I mean, you're not far away, and I, I'll certainly hop on a plane to Kansas City. I'm doing that in two weeks anyway. All right, so. <laughs> perfect. Hey, real quick, Terry, before uh, we get into some of the other stuff you got uh, going there, um, De Deborah. Yeah, we've kind of titled our uh, program with Deborah. And it's uh, two regular guys and a girl who prints. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. That yeah. makes it. That's so perfect for anybody that remembers two guys, a girl and a pizza place. <laughs> <laughs> two guys, a girl and a pizza place. And then, uh, the, the, yeah. So anyhow, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Becky Fisher says, go Chiefs. Go so, Chiefs. Uh, got another Chiefs fan there. Good stuff. All right. All right, Terry. Well, what else is going on? Uh, hey, real quick here, and I just wanted to mention uh, last week, uh, last, well, just, a, yeah, I guess it was this time last week, uh, the MBM show was here in Phoenix, and and I was trying to remember if I'd ever done a show here in Phoenix, and and the only one I could remember was right after 9-11, uh, SGI Expo was was canceled, of course, because, uh, you know, nobody could fly, and um, they did do a, a technology event here in Phoenix that was pretty well received. But uh, NBM, you know, they're they're experimenting with a lot of different uh, locations, and and uh, I think it went really well. It was uh, very very busy on day one, day two, uh, not busy at all. But uh, but buyers, I, I think the only drawback for me was the fact that a lot of the people I talked to there had just been the week before at the ISS show in Long Beach. And, and for anybody who doesn't know, Long Beach and, and Phoenix are only six hours apart. So mm -hmm. timing wise, I think it was probably not the best uh, because, and well, plus the day before the Super Bowl and the uh, waste management uh, golf tournament, the most attended golf tournament uh, in the country was going on here in Phoenix at the same time. But, um, but I think it, it, it might be a, uh, a good opportunity in the future for, you know, future shows. And uh, I love the fact that, that these guys are going to, uh, MBM is going to all these new locations every year. There's another, you know, we did Portland, we did Sacramento, uh, we're doing Milwaukee this year. So I'm uh, pretty excited about it because some of the folks that I spoke to uh, here in, in the, in uh, at the show had never been to a trade show before. They were local businesses and never took that time. But since it was local, they, they came over. So I think that's going to be the biggest advantage for NBM and, and, and the way they're putting on these events. And and one more quick thing, Aaron, my yeah. uh, uh, my 18 year old daughter, she's a senior at Desert Mountain High School here in Scottsdale. And uh, uh, she and her band, Black Velvet, were defending their their championship for winning the, the Battle of the Bands last year. Uh, yeah. They hadn't announced the winner as of um, the last time I asked her. But uh, but one of the bands, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, between songs, the the lead singer goes, and we've got T-shirts, and they start heaving T-shirts into the audience, and and I thought, ah, good for you, <laughs> and good for some garment decorator out there, and uh, probably somewhere in Scottsdale, or they bought them online, uh, more likely, <laughs> since uh, they they look to be about sixteen or seventeen. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought it was kind of a cool deal that uh, that they were tossing T-shirts into the audience. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, uh, good stuff there. We got uh, plenty, plenty of uh, good stuff out uh, out of the way. Um, reminder: uh, the five things we've kind of uh, changed how that's that's happening. So uh, you know, we're we're really kind of putting ourselves on hold with the the five things. We're kind of looking for others to bring their five things to us. So um, we're still still waiting for you guys to step up and 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 do that. Uh, if you want to head over to tworegularguys.com slash five things, it's the number five. <laughs> five things <laughs> um so that way uh you know we will uh 
<laughs> share your information and, and, uh, you know, you will be part of the show. So, uh, easy to do and, and, uh, no, no excuse not to. So exactly start, right. Start and, conversation. And, and, uh, and, and they'll have a life of its own right there on our, our uh, website and uh, yeah, there for people to see all the time and link to. So uh, take advantage of this opportunity and we'd love to hear your five things, but Hey, we do want to thank all of our regular listeners and you should be doing five things and, and anybody new listening today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have an idea for a future show, go to our contact us page at the number two regular guys.com <laughs> and, uh, and even NFL quarterbacks are copying our, uh, our style here. <laughs> you can also reach us on uh, social media. We're everywhere at two regular guys. If you are watching us live right now on Facebook live, please jump in and participate. And uh, we uh, we'd love to hear from you. And with that, uh, Aaron, let's hear a word from our new gold sponsor. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to uh, kind of read some information here and and because uh, it's ever changing and it's great stuff. So, you know, instead of just playing the same old commercial over and over again, we're going to uh, definitely uh, bring some information. But uh, let me get this up into the broadcast here because this is their YouTube page. Um, so you can kind of take a quick peek here. Uh, this episode of the Two Regular Guys is brought to you by Brighton Leap, makers of the Reggie Award winning Imbrilliance Embroidery Software. Embroiders, you should know, and brilliance is different. You don't need dongles, licenses, or trade activations for every user. With Embrilliance, one license runs every computer in your shop. Embrilliance runs natively on both Macintosh and Windows computers, and a single license lets you install for both Mac and Windows users. Uh, their module systems let you buy only what you need. If you need lettering, sizing, and coloring, you can get just that. If you want full-blown top-shelf digitizing, you can get that too. And every tool runs standalone or, or as part of their unified platform. And Brilliance is flexible. You can even improve the way existing designs run with reducing the stitch count, all from expanded stitch files. Check out their software for yourself at embrilliance.com. And just for our two regular guys listeners, you can enter the code 2, that's the number 2, RG, at embrilliance.com slash store for 10% off your entire purchase. They have a large number of instructional videos on YouTube, which you can see in front of you now, and a vibrant users community on Facebook who are always happy to help if you want to learn more. So uh, those of you listen to the podcast version, make sure you uh, check out the video version or just get over to uh, see what they've got going on over at Embrilliance. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again to uh, Brighton Leap for their support. And uh, though the, they are our gold sponsor, we still have sponsorships available. Check out the details at two, the number two regular guys.com slash sponsorship slash. And uh, just go to our website and there'll be a, there'll be a, a, a header there that you can check that out. We would love to, uh, you know, we, we, we've reached out. Uh, we, we've had some of the same sponsors for, for quite a while and, and decided that uh, we'd like to have some, some uh, different folks from the industry uh, be involved in the show. So take this opportunity and we'd love to see you uh, as a part of the show. Absolutely. Great stuff. Yeah. And uh, good morning to everybody checking in here live and uh, trying to get the comments up. Uh, definitely missing some people that uh, commented earlier. So appreciate you tuning in and, and uh, keep those comments coming. We want to hear your ideas, your suggestions. This is a, excuse me, a community conversation, not just Terry and I as talking heads. So as much as we, anyhow, never mind. I'm not going there. <laughs> as much as we're willing to do it, is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, all right. That's, you're right. Yes, that's what I was going to say. All right. <laughs> you read my mind, Terry. Yeah, that's scary. We may have been doing this for too long. Uh, in fact, <laughs> speaking of that, actually, that reminds me. Um, I was remiss. Last week, it was Eric and I uh, bringing the show to, uh, to the world. And um, I was remiss. Last week was the start of our seventh year. So, wow, and I and I was I missed it. Yeah, and, <laughs> doing the NBA <laughs> show, <laughs> and Terry took a day off. Jeez, man, a day off. <laughs> That's going to reflect was, in your pay, there Terry. Was, there was a cake. There was a ribbon cutting. Where's Terry? Oh, he's taking the day off. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's literally phoning it in. <laughs> <laughs> literally. All right. Well. Uh, <laughs> Terry, let's uh, let's talk. Get into our topic because we also want to talk to Marshall. So uh, we got lots sure. of uh, great content to shove in here today, and and uh, hopefully uh, everybody gets a ton out of today. But let's yeah. let's we're going to talk about niche markets and and boosting 2019 sales. So why don't you start us off with maybe just kind of a conversation about niche markets in general and and why they're important. Absolutely, Aaron, and and uh, our regular listeners know we kind of uh, preach the the gospel of niche marketing because. 
you know, you, you, you can be you can be a little bit good at everything, but to to have a niche market and, and to explain it further, you know, it's a it, it's a category of customer out there that you become intimately uh, involved with that you uh, you know all the ins and outs and the secrets and 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 you know hey there aren't any real secrets out there in the world right but but <laughs> you can if you focus on a niche then then you're going to know more than that person who's just do, trying to trying to kind of dabble in all the different marketplaces all the secrets all the all the keys to success uh you know are within that market and and uh, you know, you and I are both big proponents of being uh, involved in one or two or three niche markets. And sometimes it's going to be complementary markets where uh, you know maybe it's summer camps. Well, summer camps are you're basically going to do all the printing uh, in the spring, and so you you kind of fill in the the holes in your in your uh, sales uh, forecasts and sales planning with a cup two or three different niche markets and that you become um you know the 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 owner of because you know more about it than anybody else in the world yeah yeah and, and i think that's the that's a real key point there is that you you know more about it and then you can be the best in that space which helps you cut through you know all the noise if you're trying to advertise on facebook you know, we've talked uh, about this before. There's 2 billion monthly average users on there. Um, how are you going to be louder than 2 billion other people? Well, you're going to do that by speaking to a very specific audience within that group of 2 billion. You know, we've talked many times where uh, with social media advertising, for example, I don't need to get 20,000 views. I don't need to get millions of viral you know, views on this thing. What I need is a hundred people that are the hundred people that are going to actually spend money with me kind of thing. So, um, right. yeah, you know, it's, it's about becoming the best in your space. I, I always, you know, volleyball is my passion and I always kind of relate it back to that. You know, when, if I'm going to go buy volleyball jerseys for my team, I want to go buy it from somebody that knows what a volleyball Jersey entails, you know, that, that I need a, a six inch left chest number, uh, here and that I need an eight inch, uh, full back number on the back and how the colors relate to each other. For those of you that aren't in the volleyball world, there's a term, uh, a player on a volleyball team called libero and they wear the opposite color Jersey of everybody else on their team. You know, so if I, you, you just want somebody that knows those things and can make that part easy for you. And, right. and so that's kind of what a niche market is. That doesn't mean that that's all you're going to do or that's, it, you know, everything that's going to be part of what you're taking in. But that's what your outward message is going to be about, that you are the expert in that space. So, you know, Aaron, I was talking uh, uh, with a vendor recently at a trade show and and uh, he related to me that somebody came up to him with, of course, the greatest T-shirt idea ever. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his idea was this. I'm going to create some graphics and then I'm going to get a website and I'm going to sell T-shirts on my website. And I'm kind of looking at him and I said, was was that the whole idea? And he goes, yeah, that was the whole idea. And I'm like, well, <laughs> let's give the guy a break. Maybe he's been in a coma for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is. Uh, a hundred thousand people's great t-shirt idea. Now, if he had yeah. said, I'm going to do that and it's got to all focus on volleyball, then I'm going to say, okay, now I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah now, now you got something there. Definitely. So now it's a niche market. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Well, well, and Terry, maybe kind of share with folks, you know, kind of why, you know, kind of being involved in a niche market, you know, we've talked about some of the benefits there, but, but what, what, what else is kind of driving that need to really be focused on your niche? Well, you know, the, the biggest thing, Aaron, is uh, especially with uh, with the explosion of social media and, and you're not going to get noticed being, hey, I print anything. You've really got to focus in on, uh, you know, may, maybe it's uh, maybe it's people who are civil war buffs and and, and you're going to then you're going to zero in on those websites that that relate to those folks that make uniforms and 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 have conversations of, about battles and things like that and then you're going to you're going to be promoting on those websites and 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 possibly doing a deal where hey anybody that comes from your site that buys you're going to get a 10% commission or whatever but but you've really to to be able to be heard in the wilderness of the internet you you've got to really focus in on 
uh, on, on some really specific niche markets. And, uh, you know, Aaron, along those lines, when when you uh, had suggested, well, it really wasn't a suggestion. Let me just tell the audience that uh, <laughs> you and when I was gone last week, you and Eric decided that we were going to do a show on niche markets to boost 2019 sales. So and as I recall, the message to me was so there. <laughs> yeah, so deal with it. I think is yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, the, really, when when we were specific though in that in that conversation about uh, 2019, uh, some the first thing came to mind for me was what separates 2019 from 2009 was the fact that the marketplace is in this massive change right now, and it's it's a downward tilt in, in order quantities. And I'm not saying it, it's it's all orders are now uh, three pieces. So you've got to do uh, cut vinyl or direct to garment or sublimation. Yeah. Uh, even the folks that are, you know, running uh, automatic presses and doing 10,000 piece runs are saying to me, well, now my customer wants 500 piece runs and they want to order, uh, you know, every week or twice a week or every two weeks because they don't want to carry inventory anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a right now, just in time world. And uh, and so those folks out there in the screen printing industry are running automatic press, maybe they're sending more work now to their manual presses. And and the shops that are manual presses, um, they're, they're getting that customer that says, well, I don't need 24 like your minimum says, I need three. So this is an opportunity. Uh, yeah. I, I've never seen such a shift in the marketplace, and 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 a shift in the marketplace means huge opportunity. Now, the person that says, "Nope, same price sheet I've had since 1984, and I'm not changing," well, <laughs> you're, you're going to be out of business. I hope you've been <laughs> saving your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when Terry says this is the biggest shift he's seen, that's going way back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Eric, Eric, did I mention, I don't know if I mentioned on the show, I, I actually started screen printing in 1979. So this is my 40th year, seven years podcasting, 40 years um, sniffing Plastisol Inc. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So we're, anyhow, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, well, so now, now, when I do my classes, by the way, when I mention how long I've been in the business, and I, I always uh, follow it with, and I don't need to hear who in the room wasn't born when I started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was five. So, anyhow, um, <laughs> so, so uh, Terry, uh, Greg Kitson shared people don't buy t shirts, people buy belongings, participation, support, promotion. That happens to be on a t shirt. So, that's, uh, that's exactly a great right. Great point there, Greg. Thank you for sharing your insight. Speaking of sharing your insight, guys, um, Terry and I are going to get to probably three, four uh, niche markets that we've come up with and still have enough time to chat with Marshall. And um, but we want you guys to share your ideas, too. So this, like I said, this is a community event. So uh, go ahead and start posting in the comments the, the niche markets that you serve or, or, or ideas for niche markets that you think are are out there. And uh, we will uh, get those up and try to get to as many of them as we can. But uh, Terry, uh, I guess I'll start off if that's okay. Is, are, sure. are we okay to, okay. So I didn't want to, I know we had this one little bit, but I'm going to skip over that. So, uh, uh oh, hold on. I have to get to this though. Greg, <laughs> Greg says, Terry sold shirts to Moses when he bought the, brought the Ten Commandments down from the mountain. <laughs> well, I always say at special events, your first thought should be, I should do shirts. <laughs> so you guys this, looks like a, this looks like a big deal. I'm going <laughs> to do shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can. Oh, so hey, okay, I got to <laughs> calm down here. That's hilarious. Uh, so Marianne says that's where the small business come in. I love the challenge of small, unique orders. Absolutely, absolutely. There, it, just going back to Terry's yeah. comment earlier. All right. Well, I, like I said, Terry, I'm going to start us off, and and uh, I, here's here's something that I've seen, and I think it's really cool. And I think you can kind of do it in a lot of different ways. So we we, we probably have a lot of people in here that are, are pet people, either dog, cat or otherwise you know we've uh, even talked before about uh, the hedgehog folks you know where they really right. <laughs> but i i think you know you can even take that and and refine that down into something even more and get like specific like specific to a dog breed um so he here's my example i'm actually going to put it up on the uh, the video segment here to uh to show folks and this is uh, somebody that i've gotten to know a little bit over time here um it's called corgi things and um, 
basically the, the lady who runs it lives and owns this space. She has a Corgi and her Corgi dog is named Lucy, Queen Lucy, actually. And um, it all started with an, an illustration of, of Lucy that she made. She's an illustrator. And that illustration of Lucy has become kind of the mascot. And, and honestly, uh, the way she uh, promotes the company, you never see uh, the person who is uh, running the company. You basically only see Lucy. So it's Lucy's company. Lucy's the dog. <laughs> and um, so Queen Lucy has become everything. You see cookie cutters there. Uh, you see, you know, pet mats. Um, you, you see all sorts of things. So uh, towels, blankets, yoga mats. So that's actually how I got to know Connie is helping her make some yoga mats through uh, Pick the Gift. So um, the, just kind of the owning of it. And, and you know, Lucy's become the Instagram star. So uh, they have Wiggle Butt Wednesday. Uh, if you know anything about corgis, they have little fluffy butts. And when they walk, it, <laughs> it, it wiggles. So a lot of the designs you'll see, like the peach, which is uh, the um, emoji for uh, butts, typically in, in the emoji world. Um, yeah, so all sorts of things. So it just and, and so she's owned this. She's just kind of been all in on this all of the time and and, and doesn't stray from that. You know, so it, it's it's that design. It's it's sticking with that. In fact, she's become so successful that she gets knocked off a ton. Uh, it, you know, she at one point shared some like wallpaper with people and, and all of a sudden that started getting printed on products and being sold on Amazon. She had to, she basically has to spend a bunch of time chasing that stuff down. I mean, to me, that's, that's where you've, when people are knocking you off, that's the greatest form of flattery. And, and, and so <laughs> anyhow, that, that's, uh, so that, that's my first niche is just to go all in on something that you're very passionate about. You know, in this case, it, she loved her Corgi dog. So, you know, maybe I should start cockapoos. I don't know. But that's <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> well, you, you, you know, Aaron, uh, and the my, my thought was when you, as soon as you started talking about this was uh, some advice I always give when I'm, I'm talking about uh, niche markets is it, it, you must be passionate about something. Make that your niche market because, you know, suddenly it's not work anymore when you're, uh, when you're doing something that you love and 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 so take advantage of of those types of things that that you're passionate about because the people you're going to be dealing with are also going to be passionate about those things as well so but uh, you know one Aaron that uh, that this isn't a specific niche as much as it is uh, as a way to to achieve the niche and and that's through subscription boxes as a as a market uh, marketing tool and you know our friend uh, Justin Lawrence at Oklahoma Shirt Company he uh, he really opened my eyes when he talked about the thousands of people every month who get a different Oklahoma shirt from his company. And, and right when they ship, they run your credit card and off goes a different Oklahoma shirt. And, and uh, when he spoke about how many pieces he sends out every month, uh, it, it, it's probably more than a lot of decorators do in, in their, in their, you know, the 12 months of his uh, subscription boxes is probably equal or more than what a lot of printers do in their regular day-to-day -day jobs. And uh, something that came up that has been coming up more and more with me is uh, folks doing something like this, but do, doing sustainable clothing, um, specific causes and charities. And uh, I did have, uh, I spoke to somebody at, uh, at the last trade show. We actually uh, did some printing, um, uh, one person brought in uh, bamboo and hemp, and another person brought in uh, hemp shirts as well. The, the The person who just did hemp shirts was uh, his his market area is is the uh, um, the folks that do cannabis dispensaries, and you know that's a pretty new marketplace because so many places are are, are offering, um, you know, so many states are legalizing marijuana, and. Uh, and, and so these stores were wanting small quantities, but this, this gentleman was going to take it a step further using hemp clothing and, and doing uh, more reach outreach, you know, to, to folks who are interested in that product category, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, being in Portland um, a couple of months ago. And it, it, it like, it was like a, being in Seattle and coffee shop. Uh, signs in every window the best cannabis in portland and i just <laughs> i kind of had a chuckle when i saw that but it's it's, it's a different world here <laughs> totally totally well, well maybe it's just an above ground uh, world now <laughs> yeah exactly the world's always been there terry you just didn't see it before <laughs> all right um 
Terry, before I get to my next one here, uh, there was a comment that came across that uh, I think it's it's worth addressing. And I've seen some people uh, already commenting in, in response. But uh, if you want to read that for us, if you don't mind, Terry, can you see that? there? Sure. Sure. I have to look at my other screen. Pardon me for oh. looking away from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, it's uh, uh, from Janeska. Uh, what's your comment for those people who have a hobby and not a business and ruin the prices in your area? Well, you know, my take on this is, is people who are out there just selling hobby shirts uh, that that you can really uh, kind of put those guys away by just offering great service and, and great finished products. The, the hobbyist is probably, uh, you know, printing on a, on a uh, you know, maybe if they're a screen printer, they're printing on a press in their garage that that they built from plans they got from a 1979 edition of how to print T-shirts for fun and profit. Um, you, you know, the folks that, that enter the marketplace on the cheap usually don't hang around very long because, yeah, it's fun for a little while. But, you know, in the end, when they're really not making any money at it, they're, they're off to something else. I mean, that's my take. How about you, Aaron? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm I'm right there with you. I mean, I, I think the best way to to do to, to deal with that is to yeah, they have a hobby. They they can't have that hobby go on forever. I, I just unless there's some way that money's flowing into that and it all <laughs> sounds fine and dandy. But like you said, as a hobby, they're not putting the effort into it. They're not providing right. the service. They're not understanding the craft at the level that, that you're going to be understanding the craft. And, and, and honestly, I wouldn't even worry about it. I, I would uh, look at that as an opportunity to go, you know what, if, if that's the route you choose to go and you, you get what you pay for and, and I'm okay with that. You know, I would, I would refer people to them if they're not your niche target core person that you want to be dealing with, you know, and, and that would, to me is like, I, I don't know, I guess in a, in a way you kind of got to have a little ego to yourself with it and, and be confident in the fact that you've taken the time to learn, know, and you feel, and you know, not, not just feel, you know that you're providing a fantastic product at a fantastic price with fantastic service. And uh, if that customer doesn't want to do business with you, then move on to the next one. So uh, quality, yeah, quality, you quality. Right. You know, it's it's like a, and and you and I and everybody who's every vendor out there has ever worked a trade show has had this person walk up. Well, nobody in my town will pay more than five dollars for a T-shirt. Yep. Yes, they are. They're in your town. They're paying more than five dollars. You're just talking to the wrong people. So, yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's a great. And, and we got some other great comments here to kind of follow this up. But uh, James Ortolani says in the entertainment business, uh, we have hobby garage bands cut prices at clubs, too. But the true high level bands win in the end. Absolutely. There you yeah. go. Um, That's a perfect analogy. Yep. Yeah. I mean, tons of great stuff. So check out check out the comments and stuff like that. If you have a strong following for your brand that does traditional printing uh, and you want to launch a niche, oh, this is a question. Sorry, I, I got to get back to that. Sorry, I was, and Allison, we'll, we will get back to that in just one second here. So Todd says, quit chasing the bottom people, people will buy you. And, racing uh, to the bottom <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely definitely good stuff okay um terry what to let's see here you you did subscription boxes let me get to mine and then allison like i said we're going to get back to to your question and we still got marshall coming up so we're packing it in here terry we're going to make this exactly. happen today buddy um <laughs> <laughs> i i will be quick because i think uh I maybe have even talked about this a little bit before but and i i was a little sneaky um i just put uh on the show outline, uh, shovels to gold miners. So, you know, nobody knew what I was getting at here, but, uh, and like I said, I may have talked about this in the past, but I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to talk about it anyways. Uh, here, here's my, here's my niche. Um, we are in a side hustle world right now that the gig economy, I, I hear it called. Uh, and, and so everybody's got to have their, their side hustle. You've got, you know, multi-level marketing companies out there, uh, blowing up everywhere from, you know, my wife's, involved in social media or otherwise somebody's somebody's selling you as a side gig right terry do you have i mean i don't know who's reaching out to you do you need essential oils what, what do you need there <laughs> yeah apparently i do because i get a lot of those, uh, <laughs> those messages <laughs> yeah and and, and the, oh, you know this and, is and by the way t-shirts that say uh, uh live and die for ohio and you know all these yeah. things yeah you know. 
<laughs> totally. So, people, so you know, people have the last name Combs. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And and in fact, a lot of the folks, probably a lot of the folks listening today, this is a a, a side hustle for them. You know that they still got a full time job, and and um and these that's all great things. I'm certainly in no way, shape, or form talking down about any of those things. I, I think this is a great opportunity, though, for printers, either garment printers or personalized decoration folks uh, in one way or another, because here's what here's what happens. And, and this is coming from personal experience with trying to help my wife with her Rodan and Fields business is the the noise is massive and the tools you get from the the corporation is share the same thing that everybody else is sharing over and over again. And you just have to be the loudest and, you know, try to be in front of your friends and family all the time with this message. Well, that, that <laughs> really yikes. And so I've always asked, you know, how can we, how can you separate yourself? How can you set yourself apart? And to me, it's like, okay, branding, um, getting personalized products, getting, you know, your look, your feel that, Hey, you know, I, I love Renana Fields, but I am me. You, you're getting Kyleen is my wife's name. You're getting Kyleen plus Rodana Fields. So, so to me, that's where, where I said shovels to gold miners. Cause to me, this harkens back to the, the gold rush era. If you really kind of look at the gold rush era in hindsight, in hindsight, a very few people actually made a ton of money mining gold. But the companies that started, the people that existed to support those efforts, the people selling the shovels to the gold miners, those are the ones that uh, actually ended up being around for a long time. You know, the, the right. Sears, the, you know, those kinds of things evolved from that. And, and so the people selling the shovels to the gold miners were the ones that uh, actually ended up being successful. So, you know, to me, it's like, get into that, go find a niche area around that kind of thing where you can support those people's efforts. So um, right. there, there's, there's my next one. You know, Aaron, uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, I, this has never happened before, but uh, our good friend, Bill Strange, just peeked in my door and then closed it again. <laughs> Haven't seen Bill for a long time. Holy you God. and I, yeah, we worked with Bill at, uh, at US Screen and uh, I'm actually not at my home office. I'm actually using Jay Bissell's office uh, <laughs> here at Equipment Zone in Tempe because we're doing a, uh, a DTG Academy. And when I'm done here, I'm gonna go out and Jay and I are gonna do a whole session on niche markets. So <laughs> my, my next one, first of all, I, then I have to run out and say hello to Bill, but uh, um, the um, uh, Jay and I were talking about you know, new markets for, for in new, new types of niche markets. And, and Jay mentioned online opportunities. He said, you know, it's, it's huge. Things like uh, platform specific social media marketing influencers. And, and, you know, we've had, uh, we've had some influencers on here who, who do deals with people like us uh, who are going to decorate a product and they're going to go out there and, and wear it and talk about it. And, and, you know, then we're going to, we're going to sell 5,000 of them. And, uh, there's all kinds of social media influencer quotes that you can uh, put on garments, internet memes, um, you know, work with YouTube channel personalities, e-game personalities. I, I thought that was a really uh, interesting and, and yeah, a, an obvious one, but uh, it's certainly not something that I immediately thought of that, that uh, you know, all, all these folks out there who have a, a million followers and, and when you're watching them, they, they open the, the, the Reese's Cup but not like a normal human being would open it. They open it so you can see the label as they're opening it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But they are all about doing uh, doing deals with you, uh, you know. And maybe it's maybe it's a catchphrase that they use, and it's on T-shirts, and and uh, and you know, you do all the fulfillment for them, and and you know, you split the profits. So. Uh, I thought that was a, an interesting one as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Todd uh, said. Uh, and the high school kids that need merch to sell for their YouTube channels. And, and it just, just like what you're saying there, Terry, that that's uh, yeah. My, my seven year old will spend hours if we let him watching other kids play with Beyblades or play yeah. these other kids that have these millions of followers. So um, yeah, it uh, definitely is, is opportunity out there for sure. All right, Terry, can we go back to uh, Allison's question here that I, kind of started to read and then I'm like, wait, wait, let's get back to it. And then, uh, and then we'll get Marshall in here and I think we're doing sure. pretty good. So, um, Allison says, if you have a strong following for your brand that 
does traditional printing, schools, corporates, nonprofits, sports, and you want to launch a niche, do you launch a second brand, a separate website? Well, um, I, a lot of folks that I know who, who do something like that will do it as a second website and, and just to so that it focuses on that that niche area. Um, you know, I, you, you'd probably cross pollinate it, though, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. On, on, on both sides, mention the other side and the link back, that sort of thing, because, well, well, here's an example. Uh, you know, a lot of folks who do who do events and they'll go, maybe it's an art fair. Well, as many T-shirts as you sell, you're also passing out as many business cards for people to say, hey, could you do shirts for me? So, you, you, yes, you want to make sure that it's that niche over here, but you also don't want to ignore the fact that, hey, I can help you over there as well. So I would yeah. just uh, cross pollinate it. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. And uh, Eric actually commented in, uh, in there and says, in my experience, you can do it multiple ways, but I had great luck creating branded websites to act as front end and also allowed me to run retail price customer facing businesses while doing standard decorating business as well. So, um, that's that's Eric's uh, that's comment. Point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my my and my take on it too is the same. So the way I look would look at that is um, your your kind of your main brand is the the big kind of umbrella, and then from there you've kind of got your your markets your your niche areas that you're going after, and you know because when you're bringing people into those niche markets, you can point them wherever you want. So you don't necessarily have to do a new website, but you have a category within that website that is all of that niche. And you have a category within that website that is all of the niche. And maybe that has a little bit different look and feel and, and brand to it, but it's, you know, XYZ niche powered by XYZ company kind of thing. So, right. Well, you know, Aaron, I, I spoke to somebody just recently who, uh, who told me that like every high school in his town, he has a web page for them and it's just their high school and it's their logos and, and just products that relate to them. Yep. Of course, the, that page is in school colors. And, and, and he said, I just keep adding, I just kept adding high schools until I had everybody in town. And, and so they can go there to get their merchandise. And he has arrangements with like the, the PTOs for, for, you know, uh, uh, giving them a share of the profits, that sort sure. of thing. So sure. same yeah. kind of concept. Totally. Okay, Jerry. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground with that and, and we still need to grab Marshall here. In fact, we're going to probably ask Marshall for, for his input on, on a niche too. So are, are you ready to bring Marshall in, Terry? Let's do it. Let's talk right. to Marshall. Here he comes. Get him up, uh, two, three, one. And there he is. Marshall, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Definitely. Well, so start us off, Marshall, with uh, your your thoughts on a niche any anything any great nuggets you can share with our listeners just right off from the start here yeah sure well what you want to be doing is concentrating on what uh what interests you so i think people have the best success when you know if they're into motocross they know all the language and i think uh terry excuse me aaron's thing on the volleyball was exactly right and you just have to you know Find the thing that you know the best, you know the language, you know the icons, you know how your people relate to that. You probably know people in that area, and it's a great thing. Uh, you know, so if you're, for example, uh, really into dogs, I love that ex example. You know, you guys are talking about pets. You know, uh, you can do the whole German, you can own the German Shepherd category, and that's all who you sell to. You can do a whole website on that, and then do you, do you want to do uh, golden retrievers? That's a different website maybe, yeah, you know, yeah. or a subset of it. And I think it's a, a great way to build your business and really being the, the big fish in the little pond, so to speak, and just owning that whole category. And, and, uh, but it's a lot of work and, and it requires you to really be focused and uh, network and it doesn't happen by accident. Success yeah. doesn't just, you know, come to you. You gotta go out and get it. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I just have to buy equipment. What? It works. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Nice. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking outside of my door here at the uh, co-working space that I'm that I'm at, and there's a sign on the wall that says "Success is simple, not easy." So uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Excellent. Nice. Well, so uh, Marshall, I told I stole Terry's opening question, so I'm just going to keep going here. Uh, but what we really wanted <laughs> to talk to you about is uh, you've got the St. Louis event coming up here pretty soon, next on the list. Uh, how's how's that different? And tell us a little bit about uh, about what's going on there and and how that's different from the event you guys had uh, in your inaugural event in Columbus. Well, Aaron, the, the one thing we wanted to do was to have our next event in your backyard. So that's why we bring it to St. Louis. We're <laughs> <Perfect. there>, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I keep telling everybody. So good. I'm glad we're in agreement. <laughs> so, no, it, uh, Shirt Lab Columbus was fantastic. We had a sold out crowd. It was a lot of fun. We, uh, I think everybody that went learned a lot. It was super successful. Um, you know, Allison, who asked that last question, she was there and uh, had a great time, met lots of people. Uh, the, the one we're doing in St. Louis, though, is completely different. In fact, we're doing four events this year, and all four events are completely different than one another. But let's just talk about St. Louis, uh, yeah. because that's the one just around the corner. It's on March the 16th, which is a Saturday. You don't have to close your shop to go. Um, so we all of our events are on Saturdays, not during the week, because we know how shop owners don't like to close their shops for anything. <laughs> and um, so it's going to be really great. We've got uh, six speakers. Let me just bring up my list real quick, and uh, I can talk about that. So we're going to start the day off with – a whole section on personal branding and networking. And uh, my Shirt Lab partner, Tom Rowan, is going to do that. So he's going to teach everyone his uh, interesting character kind of point of view. And the whole idea for this is, you know, when Tom has a meeting or goes to a chamber event or does something, everybody already knows who he is because he's such a master at getting out there and being that interesting person. So he's going to have a little workshop on how you can do that for yourself. Um, and then we have a guy named Matt Platt, who's an expert on Facebook ads. And I know a lot of shops spend a lot of money and Facebook is always, hey, you got 20 bucks, buy a new ad. They're always doing that, right? So how do you know that your Facebook ads are working? How can you get the ROI? How do you do your pixel the right way? How do you get your... Uh, metrics and so you know exactly how to do things. So Matt is an expert on Facebook. He teaches it all around the country. We're so lucky that we were able to get him and he's going to really uh, dig that in and let everybody know how to do Facebook ads. Um, you mentioned Justin earlier. So we got Justin Lawrence. He's going to do a whole class on how to start a subscription service. So if you've ever wondered how to do this, he's He's making a lot of money doing it. He's super successful. He's going to show you how to do that. Then we have uh, Ryan Moore. He's going to do a different video segment than he did in Columbus. This one is going to be how to brand your shop, but it's going to be from uh, your customer's point of view. So we want to do customer testimonials and how to build your brand. So because the idea here is it's, it's your brand isn't what, you say it is, it's what your customers say it is. So how can we do that with video? So Ryan's going to have a whole segment on that. And then we've got, um, you know, the Yoda of our industry, Mark Kudre. He's going to do a whole thing on Profit First, which is a book by Michael Michaelowitz. And uh, it's an awesome book. And uh, so it's really about how to engineer your company for you, the owner, to make more money. And then uh, the last segment is going to be Lori Feldman is going to have a whole thing about how to do automated email campaigns, you know, how to use MailChimp properly, how to set it up so your marketing runs itself because most business owners, you know, they don't have time to do a lot of stuff because they're doing so many things. So if we can build it so our marketing is automated, then we can have better leads coming in, which drives more business. And so she's going to teach everyone how to do that successfully. And then at the end of the day, we're going to have a big round table Q and a discussion. So uh, that's the content for Saturday. Um, it's going to be fantastic. And Friday night, we're having a networking event at the uh, ballpark village, which uh, Aaron, you've probably been there. It's probably one of the largest sports bars I think I've ever seen. And um, we have a VIP dinner after the event. And then 
Sunday, we have a mastermind brunch. And so that's lots of networking time, lots of uh, interesting things. Um, but that pretty much is the uh, shirt lab event. Uh, we've got uh, a tons of people are buying tickets. We're only selling it to 50 shops. And uh, we're, I don't know, probably about a little over halfway sold out right now. Our ticket pricing are, is going up next week on the 15th. So right now it's $4.95 if you want to not pay more money <laughs> to, now stop to, to get your tickets. And um, so that's in a nutshell. Yeah. So you guys have any questions about anything? Because uh, I could talk about it for a long time. <laughs> I, I do want to comment that I had no idea that Justin Lawrence was speaking there about the subject that I brought up, which was a great idea for, <laughs> for <laughs> niche markets. So uh, it, it seems like it was a it was a setup lead in for you, but I was <laughs> very surprised to see, hear you say the same thing. But yeah, um, it, uh, we were going to ask about the new format, but uh, I'm I'm assuming you kind of gone through that for us. Yeah, Correct. well, it's it's kind of the same thing. This isn't a lecture. It's like a TED Talk where the guy just stands there and talks. This is more of a workshop style thing where each of our instructors are asking questions and they're very involved with the with the crowd, which is why we're limiting it to 50 people, because if it was 200, I mean, it's really hard to get that out. But if it's a limited crowd, then you have um, – uh, a better way to interact with everybody and yeah. so a lot, a lot more specific to okay your shop does this now let's let's talk about that facebook wise that sort of yes. thing right so how do you do it what do you do and uh yeah see great comment from Allie there you know she could attend every shirt lab uh but she's going to the one in may which is going to be in washington so yeah. you know um and we have a really fun thing so we have a a, a microphone that's a, about the size of a volleyball, but it's foam and we can throw it across the room. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Just throwing the microphone for people to have questions when they had uh, something to say. Um, and so the, the event again is on uh, March the 16th. Uh, and that is uh, the day before St. Patty's day. If that helps you remember it, uh, we've, uh, we might be drinking some green beer on Friday, I guess. <laughs> but, but, um, It'll be Budweiser, be but yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's the here's the telling thing is that we've got, I don't know, uh, six, seven, eight people from the first shirt lab coming to St. Louis. Wow. And, uh, and these people don't live in St. Louis. They're flying in for it. And, uh, so if you live in St. Louis, you've got an advantage that you don't have to buy a plane ticket or get a hotel or any of that. You could just show up. So uh, if you're within a, you know, an hour or two drive, which is airing a lot of places, right? How yep. much yep. are within that circle? Yeah. Uh, you should really go. It's really going to help your shop. This is stuff that you're not hearing really anywhere else. Um, and we've made a, uh, we've worked really hard to curate the content for these. Uh, and so we're, we think that we can give a lot of it, uh, help to people. And of course, Tom's there, I'm there. There's a lot of networking with other printers, which is frankly, a uh, half the reason you go to these things is to, uh, talk to other shops. Totally. Totally. Uh, Marshall, the question was, uh, there was a question, RV parking, any, any idea about that? <laughs> RV parking? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, this Aaron, it, how big's your driveway? Yeah, our, <laughs> our, the hotel is at the Marriott Grand downtown, and the event is at the uh, Morgan Stanley T Rex Innovation Center, which is just across the street. Yeah, um, and then uh, it's it's downtown by the stadium there, so by Bush Stadium where the Cardinals play. So my guess is there's there's obviously lots of uh, RVs and stuff that come in for for different events there. So I would think that uh, there's definitely got to be something nearby that would be uh, be possible so um like i said yeah terry you can park in front of my driveway if you need to so <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like christmas vacation <laughs> yeah totally oh boy never i gotta talk to my neighbors now all right so, so marshall what, what else is coming up what's on the calendar beyond st louis uh well uh, well beyond st louis um well a couple things i'm gonna see you guys at thread x can't wait yep, for that right. yeah uh, and uh, um we didn't uh, arrange to all drive together because uh, I'm flying on a plane, so I guess we're not doing that this year. Maybe <laughs> next year. Um, and then 
We're also, uh, I'm going to Atlantic City. I'll be at Atlantic City show. Uh, I've got an awesome uh, workshop at uh, Mind's Eye Graphics in April. Uh, I should have written the date down. I can't remember the date, but you can go to it. Well, well Greg Eye Kitson is, is, is listening right now. So Greg, uh, throw that date up there. <laughs> I want to say it's the 10th, but I could be wrong. Um, and uh, a lot, a lot of things going on. I'm um, flying out on Sunday to go to a shop in New England, so I, I travel a lot. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm everywhere. So nice, nice. So what, what are that? You, you got a couple other events though coming up on the shirt lab calendar. Did did I oh, miss yeah. those? Yeah, sorry, uh, I didn't That's take. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so the next event after St. Louis is Washington D.C. And that's going to be on uh, May the 18th. Uh, and uh, that shirt lab is focused on the athletic team sales. So if you do stuff for little leagues, uh, soccer, uh, CrossFit gyms, any of the stuff that involves athletic apparel, this is the event for you. It's every speaker. We're going to be talking about that um, and how you can do that better and best practices and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then that's on May the 18th. Uh, the third one is going to be in Portland, Oregon, and that's going to be on August the 3rd. Uh, that's a general session, just kind of like the one we're doing in St. Louis. But that's completely different topics. So we're going to be talking about Instagram and story brand and a bunch of other, other uh, really great um, ideas. And then the last one is going to be uh, see April 11th to 13th. There you go, Greg. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and so the um, the last one's going to be on September the 28th, and that's going to be Atlanta. And that one's going to be solely focused on apparel brands. So if you're a shop that's got their own apparel brand and you're trying to launch it, you want to get a website, you want to get into stores, we've got experts who do this for a living. This is all they do coming in and giving you their time and knowledge about how they did it. And so I think it's going to be super impactful. Um, I'm really excited about that one. I, uh, I don't know why, just because it's in Atlanta and I, I love Atlanta. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll happily answer anybody's questions. You can reach out to me at Marshall at shirtlabpro.com. <laughs> excuse me, or my business partner, Tom at Tom at shirtlabpro.com. We'd love to see you guys there. And, um, you know, tickets go up in price for the St. Louis one next week. So get your tickets now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Good deal. Well, thanks so much, Marshall. You got lots of great stuff coming up there. And uh, if you're checking the, the Facebook video, just get get into the comments. There's all sorts of uh, great links and stuff there. But uh, shirtlabpro.com is where you'll find uh, Marshall and Tom. And uh, Marshall, have a great day. And uh, yeah, we'll see you, uh, I guess, next week in, in San Diego. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, uh, I'm coming in early to take uh, Aaron Draplin's workshop. Cool. Super Very excited nice. about that. Uh, you know, I've been a designer for a long time, and he's one of my guys I've been following for years and years and years. So uh, yeah. really excited about that. So Totally. And in fact, I think you even mentioned him in the car ride when we were coming back from Palm Springs. His name came up, and, and I was like, oh, yeah. there we go. Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, All right. guys. I appreciate you having me on. Awesome. All right, Marshall. We'll see you next week. Perfect. All right, Jerry. Good stuff. For there. anybody who doesn't know, uh, last year, uh, Marshall, uh, Eric Campbell, Aaron, and myself uh, drove in my car to Palm Springs for the uh, ThreadX event and recorded uh, uh -huh. most of the way there and most of the way back and, and a uh -huh. lot there. So we had a, bits and pieces of a lot of shows. And man, it, uh, anybody who's interested in garment decorating uh, needed to be in that car because <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked about it all. So luckily, yeah. Aaron was... Uh, was doing a lot of recording for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark Kudraven said at the show that uh, if we would have gotten to a car accent, uh, a good chunk of the content available out there would have been lost. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. definitely. And I was driving, so man, uh, <laughs> everybody's yeah. rolling the dice. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, well, and then, and then I drove for a short way on the, on the way back, and uh, man, while we were recording too, so you guys were yeah. really taking your lives into your own hands. <laughs> Oh, uh, very good. Well, Aaron, uh, absolutely. 
I ate a lot of cookies right there. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A uh, couple quick uh, other events for us coming up, Terry. And then I think we'll get out of here for the day. Um, Absolutely. I, I've got my morning small business Saturdays that I do every Saturday morning still happening. In fact, uh, I've got a gentleman joining me tomorrow to talk about finding your ideal customer. Uh, and I'm super excited to host him. So uh, looking forward to that tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. Pacific Time over at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash aaronmontgomery.info. And uh, then right after ThreadX, Terry, we've got uh, DAX Kansas City coming up. And my two seminars there are February 22nd. I will be presenting Developing a Business Plan. Uh, and then a couple hours later, I will be presenting being customer centric equals more profits. So uh, really excited to uh, to present those two events. And uh, yeah, looking forward to having people let me know that you're going to be there. Um, I'm I, I can't wait to uh, get to talk to the to folks about these two things. But what about you? Terry? What do you have coming up? I have uh, February 16th and 17th. That's a Saturday, Sunday. I'll be in Chicago at Atlas Screen Supply. They're atlasscreensupply.com, my uh, complete screen printing business course. I know there's a couple of slots still left in that class if you're uh, in the area. Uh, I will be flying out on Sunday night directly from Chicago to San Diego uh, for the uh, for ThreadX. I'll be meeting you there, Aaron, and uh, of course, uh, all of our friends that that we uh, talk to on the show that'll be attending February 22nd. So the end of that week, <laughs> I'll be doing my deck seminar. So I'm going to go home long enough to uh, repack my bag. Uh, I'm going to be doing, uh, put your new screen printing business on a path to success. That'll be on, uh, on in, during the morning hours. And then in the afternoon, the DTG process and finding the perfect niche market. There it is. <laughs> Aaron, all my upcoming events uh, for 2019 are at terrycombs.com and you can find that under tour dates. Nice. Very nice. And then uh, show producer Eric is uh, also going to be uh, presenting some seminars there at Dax, Kansas City. Uh, his on the 22nd, which is the Friday, uh, is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the digital difference, foam gradients and performance wear. And uh, then the next day, he's going to be presenting patch making for fun and profit. So uh, great stuff there. And uh, oh, Greg Kitson says ThreadX19, San Diego, California, February 17th through the 19th, 2019. Coming up, folks, uh, email him with questions if you still have not made your decision to attend. So, yeah, if you haven't. If you're still on the fence, uh, just get off the fence and attend. I mean, <laughs> it's. I, I, I'm not sure there are any questions that you can ask other than uh, why the heck am I not attending? Uh, you know, you're going to be left out. So, uh, so don't even worry about emailing Greg. Sorry, Greg. I'm just just taking taking yeah, just uh, for you. There's no no questions you need to ask. Just be there. Um, and, uh, it's and then, Woodstock for decorators. Be there. <laughs> that's right. And then tell them the two regular guys sent sent you there. And then make sure you find Terry and I and Marshall and uh, whoever Greg and and everybody else is going to be there. And and uh, let's let's meet. Let's network. Let's talk in person. And uh, we were fortunate to get to meet a whole bunch of people, including some folks that are uh, tuning in today, Allison and, and, and others. So, all right, Terry. Well, you think we've uh, done enough for one day? You should probably get back to work, huh? I believe I should get over there and jump in and help uh, help Jay Bussell uh, continue on with the, the morning seminar. Nice, nice. Well, <laughs> we've come to the close of another show, so hopefully you get out there and use the niche markets or some creative juices around those niche markets we talked about. And I uh, also want to thank Marshall Atkinson for his time today. Uh, make sure to check them out over at shirtlabpro.com. Absolutely. And we also want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell. You can also find Eric at ericcampbell.com. And a uh, special thanks to our new sponsor in Brilliance and that family uh, and their family of products. Absolutely. Next week, we're going to be talking leadership and culture in the workshop with uh, Nathan Lieber. So I am and really excited to chat with him. Did, did I even say that right, Terry? You did. You did. You hit right. dead on. You're getting so much better at this, but <laughs> it's only taken me seven years. <laughs> All right. Well, until next week, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at two regularguys.com. That's the number two regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over on 
or Facebook, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.